Okay, so asked been asked this question on to talk about identification. So identification is a great it's a great um, it's a great thing. I, I I use the word identification a lot. Um, so what are the things that uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about the mechanism of identification in this video. So like uh, I like I would say that one of my biggest addiction. I mean, there's lots of addictions. And, and I'll explain what that means. I, uh, well, let me explain what addiction means. It, mean, it means that one has done something so so much, like been addicted to thoughts for so long, that you just can't. It's like a it's like a train, and uh, it's just like it's like an energy that wants to go and latch on to the next thought and the next thought and the next thought. It's almost like um. It's like a machine that seems to have its own energy to get get hooked into thoughts. And so even if you read to read something like be still or something, you um, people end up just being in their thoughts all the time and don't know how to be still and how to silence these this addiction to latching on to the next thought and wanting the next thought and wanting to be in thoughts nonstop. It's like a it's like a severe um, addiction, and stopping that train of this almost unconscious addictive identification with the stream of thoughts. Um, so so that's how I hope that made sense. But there's a you know for most uh, I'd say for it's it's human karma to be uh, to get very easily uh, um, uh, identified with thoughts and addicted to thoughts, addicted to the body, the idea that the body is me, that's a very strong addiction in this world with human karma. Uh, the addiction, and then the, the addiction, uh, once you're um, addicted to thoughts and the body, then the whole illusory idea that I am the body, I am the thoughts, and then living in a world where everyone is believing this idea that I am my thoughts and I am my body, it's like a collective hypnosis. It's a reinforcement as you go around and speak to other people say like, how are you? And the, they say, like, I've got a pain in my foot and I'm really worried about the future. And then you say, yeah, I'm, I'm got a, I've got a pain in my ankle and I'm worried about the future. And so it's a reinforcement of this. You don't sort of meet people and then smile at them and then don't speak because you're in the beingness and you're blissed out, uh, out of no thought. So you might speak, but... The, bit of the bliss might speak, but there's no th uh, no thought identification. So out of nothing, words may come, but it's not you that's speaking them. So how do you get? So that's what I mean. So I, so those you know the Course in Miracles talks at great length. Uh, some of my, I think I, I like repeating this from the Course. I'm. It says it over and over again. I'm not my body. I'm free, for I am as God created me. I, you know, basically saying I'm not the body, I'm the infinite. I'm the infinite beingness. Uh, and it, the Course in Miracles knows that if you're doing the Course, you've got a you've got a, a an identified addiction to the body as being you. And, and also, all my thoughts are meaningless. The Course in Miracles, the Holy Spirit knows your addiction to thoughts. And so is just, um, just trying to hammer it. These thoughts, are, all these thoughts are meaningless. I just repeat this uh, for um, ACM students. You know, when it says uh, all my thoughts are meaningless, it means every single thought in your head, not just the ones you want to get rid of, the good ones, the bad ones, even thinking. Uh, and uh, I mean, there is nothing there to say. Like, I know most people think, well, I want to get rid of my my bad ones, but I want to just have good ones, and I want to keep thinking good ones, and I want to be still a thinker. That's not what it means. If all your thoughts are meaningless, just forget it. Forget going to the addiction of thinking. It's like a bad TV. Like um, I'm talking about the addiction to thoughts now. I guess identification with thoughts. Most people are like thought thought um, thought addicts. You know, it's like a TV screen and they're just hooked into that. Ne what's the next thought? They're just um, craving the next thought. So you're, you're trying to, you know, if it was just a mild identification, you wouldn't have to do so much work. 
over and over again my thoughts are meaningless it would be very easy you just like no one has to let go of my thought about grass is meaningless unless you're a grass addict you know you, you spend your whole life looking at different types of grass but most people aren't uh, but you know things like chocolates things like bodies you know uh, vanity or being attracted to other bodies or thoughts or feelings um, and uh, what else yes yeah, so and then you get to the esoteric identifications as you start doing the observer practice the course of miracles you realize there's a, an, ad an addiction to getting absorbed in feelings oh my goodness there's a there's a blocked nose let me really identify and, and moan about this and get involved in this you know, actually, that that that's a that's a bad identification. That's a bad addiction. You know, it's like the drama of getting involved in feelings that really, they. I mean, like if a cloud passes by in the sky, sky, most people don't need to get like really obsessed and and identified and hooked into it. But with the feeling, it's like, oh my god. One of the things to realize as a student is um, when the ego labels something as mine like it's my feeling or I am feeling or it's my thoughts and I'm so when the ego makes the passing stream of feelings and thoughts my thoughts then that makes things a hundred times worse it's not it's they're not your thoughts they're just thoughts that are passing by as soon as the but but the ego as soon as it says these are my thoughts it makes the problem a hundred times worse and uh, if there was a pain in the body, as soon as you say it's my body, then it, you see the identification of the addiction gets worse because you're you're stating a non-truth. You're not the body. So if you say it's my body and I've got a pain in my foot or a, a breathing problem, you're just reinforcing the illusion and cut and and stating something that's not the truth. So Hawkins loves to talk about kinesiology, and when you when you make a statement which is not the truth, your body goes weak. You actually get worse. When you make a statement like I'm not the body, I'm not this feeling, I'm not these thoughts, I'm the infinite, then uh, your body, I mean, everything starts to release. So it's based, so you want to, uh, early students speak very dualistically and that's appropriate. But later on, you want to get the highest statements. I mean, you're not that, completely not the body or the thoughts. Okay, so identification. So thoughts and body are some of the key ones as a beginner. You need to be focusing on letting go of the identification, the addiction. Yeah, I would say like human beings are just like addicted to being in their thoughts, their body, but there's an, and then all of these other problems like feelings in the body and uh, ideas of I've got a special body and I want to, and, and other people have special bodies, all of these problems. So all bodies are meaningless. It's just an addiction. You're not, you're not a body and no one else is a body, really, once you realize that awakening. And um, so there's also, but the subtle ones, like time, identification with time, identification with location, uh, identification with images. Um, so there's all kinds of other subtle ones that you realize that you need to let go of. You're not an image. An image that passes by and you identify with it as if it's your image or it's an important image, that's a problem. Uh, feelings that pass by and making up a story and going, oh, it's my, this feeling is bad and oh my goodness and let me think about this and I think it's going to get, and that, that, that's just, just going in the totally the wrong direction. Time, um, you everyone actually has an unconscious addiction to time, like counting seconds in their head. Once you realize that and go to the observer or just cancel your belief that time ever existed or that seconds exist or that you need to keep track of, you know, I cancel my belief, I need to keep track of time because that's what's happening. Unconsciously, they, you know, like some, nearly everyone knows, like if you say how many minutes passed by, they'll just come out of the mouth, you know, the, and then you'll know how, how fast they are. I mean, if they say like, well, we've done about seven and a half minutes, they're really in time. And if they say, I have no clue, <laughs> probably blissed out you see so um uh, the body the body is a location so as you start to let these things go they disappear so you have to so okay so let's get more advanced there is no world unless there's identification there can't be a this and a that so um let's say darkness 
if there was no identification with darkness or color or contrast, then that wouldn't exist. If there's no identification with any form or object in this world, like I am I'm witnessing a tree on a sunny day, but if there's no identification, then the world doesn't exist. So as all identification with all forms uh, ex uh, ceases to exist, well, you're going up the levels of consciousness. You will eventually get to states of bliss and ecstasy. And as you let go more, you I mean, in my experience, is it's the infinite white light beyond this world, uh, where there's zero tracking to this world. You, you've left this world into a dimension of light, infinite light, that... that um, uh, you wouldn't be able to identify with this world in that place because the, this world does not exist there. So uh, um, I'll just share something. Um, you know, uh, I was I was walking down the uh, street and I was just talking to a, f a friend uh, about. I think I talked about the observer, and uh, you know, this guy started giggling and laughing, and he was so happy and present. And uh, that's what that's what's awaiting everyone. If, as you let go of all of this stuff, as you let go of identification, the world gets brighter and happier, and there's a, there's a more infinite flow. And there's no and it's really what's happening is the is the absence of 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 you as the body and the thinker is starting to disappear, and that infinite light and experience is come to, getting to be present. So. Let me try and, yeah, I think there's a great question. I mean, what do I mean when I say identification? So identification, it's like a it's like a latent energy that wants to hook into something over and over again, like a like an addiction, hooking into thoughts, hooking into body, the idea that I'm the body, or into feelings, or into uh, the addiction to thinking and intellectualizing is, is extreme in this world, especially the Western world, where it's like um intellect and understanding is like the the god you know it's like oh how many phds have you got uh, can, can you do calculus um, uh, how many things can you remember you know i don't i don't want to remember anything <laughs> you know, it doesn't sound great you know but uh, that's the i want to be empty empty of it all so um that's such a lovely uh, i mean each each is a topic identification of thoughts body feelings we could have a separate video on each. But anyway, I'll, I'll stop rambling. But it's such a lovely question. Thank you.